freaking first cut. Golly. Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your recap episode for this week's 3M Open. Joining me to break it all down, Patrick McDonald is here and also looking quite tan. Yeah, thanks, Rick. I had a a friend in town this week, got some color. The weather's been great here in Charleston. Uh, I I won't spoil the winner for those few people who watch it and get upset, but uh, great week all around. What a week. Great week all around. Yes, that's Kyle Porter in the absence of Greg Ducharme rocking us with a what a week. Hello, Kyle. What a week. I will spoil. There was a uh, JT was involved late in the tournament. So if you haven't caught up since Thursday. I'll tell you what, the the, the best teaser. push for J, uh, JT to make the Ryder Cup team that we've seen in quite some time. Exactly. If you told me a man from Alabama just outside the top 70 was going to be in the mix come Sunday. Uh, I, I think Zach Johnson would be very happy. That's dangerously, sure. that's dangerously close KP to like cut from the same cloth of some of your tweets. Right? Oh, it's like, Patrick. Patrick's actually my ghostwriter, And I need to, I need to confess all of these years of writing and same things has actually been, he started when he was in high school. So here we are. Uh, very well done to Lee Hodges. He got his, uh, first career victory today. It was a runaway though. We'll zoom out a little bit, go earlier in the day because Bo Hostler, Bo Hostler gave us one fleeting hope, Patrick, that someone might be able to go out and apply the necessary pressure on Lee Hodges because Bo Hostler woke us up this morning with a nine under 62, tied the course record and featured one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight consecutive birdies from holes nine through 16. This could have had Lee Hodges shaking in his boots this morning while he was watching PGA tour live. If only Kevin, Yu was able to do something like this yesterday after turning in 29 and then falling off the face of the map. But look, Bo, Bo Hosler's playing some pretty good golf these last two weeks. I finished, he finished T six, I believe at the Barracuda championship. And then you factor in this one and it couldn't have come at a better time for someone who was outside the top 70 in the FedEx cup. Uh, you know, doesn't really play in major championships all too often. I, I don't have it starts in front of me, but th- that's kind of what this part of the year can do. Just like one really solid round. You're, you're not going to have a chance to win a tournament per se, but this finish and this back nine uh, really changes the complex complexion of his season. Yeah. The other issue KP is uh, I believe when he finished this round, he was in third by himself and then obviously everybody goes out and also takes advantage of the golf course he ends up finishing t13 but moves up 42 spots trying to make a push that that top 50 uh is going to allow these guys to set their schedule it's going to allow them to get into all of the elevated events it's going to be pretty life-changing if you can get hot for like three weeks yeah i think it makes this part of the schedule more interesting right because it's not i just said this on on a on CBS Sports HQ, but the these are you're playing for it's not it's not somebody that's like 130th that's playing for 125th, and we used to try to pump that up and say like oh this is so like important, but you kind of a lot of those guys just got the same outcome no matter like they still got the same number of starts on close or close to it you know and so it was just a weird thing, but th- this time there's like real implications of not top 70 not making it or top only the top 70 making it to the playoffs top 50 getting into elevated next year uh, and different things like that so i i think it's made it more interesting uh best finish in a major patrick for bo hostler was oh oh wait wait it wasn't uh, no. US open when he was an amateur right <laughs> was it was that it t- so what are you finishing t t10 at marion or no olympic club t29 at olympic he fell off he he wasn't even low am that that week because uh a fellow longhorn took the took the honors oh no was it jordan js uh, six-time masters winner jordan speed uh, if you just tap into my brain that sounds right the that's his best major finish from pretty crazy 15 years ago or whatever that was yeah he's only played in eight wow how old was yeah. he then like 17 16 mm, yeah six i think he's 17 that sounds right okay 
Wow. Uh, that was basically the most exciting round of the day. Nine under 62, two shots better than anybody else. Martin Lair, Dylan Wu, Zach Blair put together seven under 64s. Dylan Wu had a very historic day, Patrick. He had the single, excuse me, had a great week. The single best putting week of the year, of the season. 11 and a half strokes gained putting. He made at least 90 feet of putts every single round. He made 448 feet of putts. That comes out to six feet a hole for 72 holes. That is insane. That's insane. W- what uh, What is second most? Do you have it? it? Actually, uh, yeah, I do. It was Brian Harmon at the Open Championship last week. Oh, of course. God yeah. damn it. 11.35. Wow. How much? Uh, how much do you think Scotty Scheffler would pay for oh. a tournament like that? He would. Well, he would uh, just just give him like eleven that he could slice up mm. and add, you know, one point five to 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 eight tournaments, or se- he'd win. That'd be seven wins. Yeah, it's like one of those deals where you have a budget for the whole season, and right. Okay. Um. But yeah, Dylan Wu ha- hasn't he been striking the ball quite well since? Uh, I believe he qualified for the U.S. Open out of Woodmont. That's typically where he goes through. Yeah, he's, um, he's having a, a low-key, like, pretty good year. Yeah, but he's outside the top 100. For, okay, he went from 103 to 85th with that round today. So he needs to move up still a bit, but he just got into the Wyndham Championship once someone else withdrew from the field. So if he carries this over, I mean, that could be 30, 30 spot bump in two weeks. Uh, but I, I can't imagine he's going to be gaining over 11 strokes next week at Sedgefield. But l- look, like I just said with Bo Hossler, I just looked up his standing as well. He actually went down a spot. So I take back everything I just said. Nice. Um, but really you can, you just catch fire here towards the end. And Kyle was saying it's much more compelling. I mean, you look at some of these names on the bubble, like Shane Lowry's on the outside too. Adam Scott, Joel Damon, uh, Kevin Streelman had a nice week. He made a big jump, but these are proven PGA Tour winners. Mm-hmm. And no offense to the guys who were fighting for 125 in years past, but they haven't really garnered the reputation or resume of some of the guys fighting for postseason berths this year. I have a couple of items. So when Dylan Wu, so Dylan Wu was in because of Luke List's WD, but then he finished fifth, so he gets in anyway off his top ten, right? So does that get somebody else into Wyndham from Luke List's WD? Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the, uh, scheduling talk to Rob Bolton. You should be the scheduling czar. Uh, the other thing, KP, I knew that was coming. I knew the Rob <laughs> Bolton thing was coming. <laughs> the other thing, KP. So let's, let's game this out here. So Dylan Wu goes from one Oh three to 85. Uh, he has 502 FedEx cup points. Currently number 70, Austin Eckroat has five ninety four. So, I can do a little bit of napkin math and say that is 92 points that he needs to make up. And that doesn't even count, you know, the 10 guys that are already ahead of him, just straight up 92 points. Do you know what finishing position approximately that would be? Because I've got the distribution right here. Well, I just I just tried to look it up, uh, but I didn't see because it wasn't posted yet. So 92 is higher than you think. Yes, it is. Uh, I think it's like. Uh, let's say so 500, 300. I'm gonna say like fifth, okay. Patrick, do you uh, want to endorse that? Do you want to add your own uh guess in? I-, I was gonna go around a fifth place finish as well. Yeah, it's seventh, seventh okay. is 90, sixth is 100. So I always think, and I and I think I probably said this last night to Greg too, you know, earlier in the year you see these guys who, you know, finish ninth and they get these like big jumps in the FedEx cup standings, but all of these guys having, you know, 500, 600 points at this, at this point in the season, they're going to have to have a huge Wyndham champion. I mean, JT is 40 JT's 50 out. That's 17th without taking into account anybody around him, Patrick, and the points that they are going to add. So it really, it really is going to require, a top end finish for Dylan Wu, a top end finish for Justin Thomas, a top end finish for these guys who are just on the outside of the line. It's a, how far back is two back situation. Uh, And 
Yeah, I mean, unlike the 125 where you could probably make up substantial ground with an unsubstantial uh, result at the Wyndham Championship, you really have to do something special. So JT top 20 with some help. Uh, uh, but yeah, like Dylan Wu, even though you boat race the field there on Sunday and gain 12 strokes putting to still need to finish inside the top five. Um, I mean, it goes to show you, he has 500 points. Like you said, that's as good as a victory. So. Oh, good point. Good point. Let's add a fourth voice to this conversation. A man who deals in the currency of FedEx cup points. We've got him straight. Oh, there he is. Mark. Oh. Gilman. Good to see you. Yeah, it's, an, it's the only currency, isn't it? I heard your conversation. I mean, it's not about dollars and cents now. It's about points, right? No, your your wallet, your bank account is filled with FedEx Cup points and spend them yeah. wisely. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, I was I was I have not seen the projected standings or what they are now after this week. I would almost be inclined to say that JT, I don't know where he is, would need better than a top twenty, surely. To He's advance. gonna need about a seventeenth. Yeah. And that does not that does not count, you know, if if Dylan Wu finishes fifth or something exactly. like that. Exactly. And then you add to that the fact that they cut from 70 to 50. So if you skating, look, uh, there is precedent because a few years ago, uh, Billy Horschel, you know, came into playoffs. That's when they were four. Started with the Deutsche Bank and TPC Boston. He nearly won there, but bogeyed the last. Then he went to Cherry Hills and, uh, and won. Um, and then he advanced to East Lake and won and won the whole thing. But it's different now with three and only 70 getting in. And if you're getting in there at like 70th, then you're going to get busy to just advance to 50th. So you essentially almost need a victory in the playoffs for Justin Thomas to be able to somehow and get in the top 30 and be relevant down there in Eastlake. Yeah, so number 70 right now, Austin Eckert, 594 points. Number 50 right now, Taylor Montgomery, 822. So yeah, you got to... You kind of got to get busy either now or that first event where things get quadrupled. Um, that's just, just one yeah. more thing. Um, yeah, in the playoffs, the, the points are quadrupled, right? That, that's always been the case. We're like 2,500 for a victory. So that's where if you win in the playoffs, then you're pretty much styling. Uh, that, that's how it works. Yeah, so a we were talking about uh, seventh being 90 points in the regular season. It's 360 in the FedEx Cup playoff. Now, everybody. In inflation. Ev but but yeah. the problem is, KP, everybody gets the inflated points, right? So it is kind of like you still have to go out there and play well. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I think it really starts to come into play when you finish in the top five. You can really start to leapfrog some people. Uh, you know, uh, maybe the math doesn't work out on that. But in my head, that's... <laughs> That's true. That if you, I mean, if you win an event, you're like, you jump into the top 10, right? Yeah. If you win, a, if you, if you win the first playoff event, you are, as Mark said, styling. You, you jump like everybody. Remember yeah. Back in, back in the day, didn't Bryson win the first two and showed up at Eastlake as the prohibitive favorite and then was overtaken by somebody? Um, I, I, I certainly remember him. I think it was Aronimink. He was in contention and might have won the next week. But he started off real fast and then slowed down towards the end. So, look, it's like all the other playoffs in the other leagues. Uh, you can't go to sleep any week. You're just going to have to play play hard. One win in the playoffs is the equivalent, Patrick, because you put this so nicely before. Uh, it's the equivalent of Max Homa's season, which would be the fourth best season in terms of FedEx Cup points. So, yeah, they, they, get, they get pretty juicy there pretty quick. Damn, that is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a lot. Is that that's probably fair, right? Given a, a win in the playoffs, but it is like, I, uh, I mean, it, it's all it's all <laughs> there's a net championship, like it's all made up, right? It's I don't know if fair is like part of the equation. My um my proposal is to have uh the three playoff events be a oh god, how good at math am I? Seventy two times three is uh, 216. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 216 whole championship. So everybody starts at even par round one of the first playoff event. Then after that four rounds, the top 50 on the leaderboard move on. Okay. Everybody keeps their score. Then the top 
30 after the next week go to East Lake. Everybody keeps their score, and then they play the tour championship. Uh, just, I mean, it's still. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Rick. In. I don't want to spend uh, three weeks in Memphis <laughs> or something. Right? Let's move cities. Is that cool with you? Yeah, no, no. We're still gonna we're still gonna move on. It's just All we're right. still gonna yeah no we're still gonna play four you know four in Memphis four rounds in uh, Chicago and then we're gonna go to East Lake but we're just gonna do it a little differently. Well, as a past perpetrator of the great city of Memphis, I would advise you to be to tread lightly on what you say about Memphis there, Mark. Uh, Rick, this, is a, you, Kyle. this is adjacent to my theory that there should be like a 500 hole major. Right. Like there should be there should be a there should be a major that. Uh, OK, you, you go go complete 500 holes. You can do it. You have seven days. <laughs> figure it out you can do it whenever you want if you want to play 100 on the first day maybe seven wouldn't be enough how many days would you need to complete 500 holes well uh let's see 500 divided by seven would be <laughs> would be the equivalent of basically 72 holes a day so four rounds a day for a week straight that'd be sick you it would be yeah, true appreciate- it would be like would, the, you know how like the Boston or like the marathon starts and like you know only half the people are able to even finish it or whatever like it would be that. It's an Iron Man. Yeah, I want to. I want to throw survival this of the Kyle. fittest. Kyle, you always make these cool comparisons between other sports and uh, players in other com- competitive fields, right? Or uh, and you sort of compare a golfer to a basketball player. Uh, you know, I watch the NFL playoffs. Well, what's the college playoffs for that uh, matter? In 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 the pros in football and like one victory is such a big deal. Now you look at other sports like baseball and basketball is the best of five or best of seven. You know, you can kind of skate by with one or two bad performances. And, and in many respects, I look at the playoffs here on tour as like one week and you pull that off and, and there's a finality to it that even though folks might disagree with it, I think it's compelling viewing certainly. And to be at those events and I'm, for, I'm fortunate to have been there, it adds a whole lot to it. Like next week at Wyndham, it's the it's it's like a mind number for me because you go to this place and Wyndham are putting us on this event where it's all about vacation and have a good time and stuff, and the weather's hot and it's summery and everyone's lying on the beach there, and you got guys essentially playing kind of for their playoff lives and for their career, and it's it's this pressure, it's this weird sort of a deal. And every week, uh, every year, this Wyndham event for me is so much fun, and then the playoffs are the same way. The other thing to consider with all this is, um, oh shoot, what was I going to say? The Wyndham Championship. Oh, Mark, are they going to have? Are they going to have someone in real time with like one of the magic boards updating us on on all the standings? How how will it's we? Mark, know? are you doing it, Mark? Are you manning the magic board? I think he froze. Oh, we lost him. No, no, he just doesn't want to answer the <laughs> question. What if he Heady play? Heady play. That was veteran <laughs> veteran maneuver. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. He's going to be calling calling Can't Ohio at midnight. <laughs> Tough scene. All right, I guess we should talk about the winner. Lee Hodges gets the job done around TPC Twin Cities. Uh, four under 67. Patrick was plenty. It was a seven-shot win. He goes wire to wire for that first career dub. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. Very impressive. I look back to his back nine on Saturday as the real deciding moment in this tournament when Kevin Yu had trimmed the lead all the way down to two. He goes out, shoots five under. He calls it the best nine of his career, and he really carried the momentum into today. It felt like he kind of got rid of all the nerves and tension on that front nine in in round three and, and played very free. Uh, he, he mentioned the last time he held a 54 hole lead was with Patrick Cantley at the American express a couple years ago. And uh, he, he thought he could kind of par his way to victory, but he, he wanted to play aggressive today. And, and you saw it right there on number two, really tough pin, tough hole, just f- goes flag hunting, hits it inside five feet, really applies the pressure on JT post and who look, when you start from five down to begin with, you, you really don't have much room for error. It's, it seems like a, a different type of pressure where, you know, you have to hold putts with some consistency and then the Eagle uh, as well on top of that. And the back nine Eagle was filthy that, that three went into uh, the, the par five twelfth, And from there, it kind of yeah, set up a stress-free walk. That'll be, that'll be the shot KP. 
257 yards to two feet, eight inches in which he makes Eagle. I'll tell you what, his shot into number six wasn't so bad either. 255 yards to 11 feet, two inches makes that putt for Eagle. I mean, that that is some world-class pressure, pressure, pressure uh, shots from 250 yards out for like the biggest day of your life. Yeah, I, I think the thing that impressed me about not just those shots, but the performance. So, so like we talk about this, anybody on, on the PGA tour is capable of a week like this, right? Anybody that's in that field could theoretically go shoot 24 under. I think what he did was he had a perfect first two days. And then it's, it was a little bit of the Brian Harmon thing where it's like, okay, I just have to mentally stay. Like I can't get mentally too far ahead of myself. And that to me, that's harder than what you did physically over the first two days, right? It, it's so difficult to main, like just to stay locked. It sounds dumb, but just to stay locked in shot after shot after shot. And he did it and he hit all the shots. And it was just, it, to me, it was a super impressive mental performance in addition to the obvious like physical giftedness. Yeah. And uh, Mark, you know, these guys, second year out of Alabama, uh, we talk about how ready you know, Colin Morikawa and Matthew Wolf and Victor Hovland have been, but there's all these other guys lurking too, where they're now sophomores and they're going out and they're kind of fulfilling some of their own, maybe personal expectations, as opposed to those external expectations that we've been putting on some of the other guys. Yeah, certainly. Um, Kyle and I spoke about this Thursday night where he pitched the argument. He goes, all right, he's leading off the first round. This is obviously Lee. And do you think he's going to hang? And I'm like, the Lee... I know certainly is going to, for various reasons, the physical gifts, um, certainly, but what he has mentally as well. And then I feel like the people around him are very grounded. He, he comes from a very grounded family. He's coach. It's just a regular guy. You know, there's, they, they certainly aren't blowing hot air up his rear end. I mean, he knows he's got to work and he's a talented guy. And the one thing, if you look at Lee Hodge's career, he sort of was a bit of a late bloomer and every level he's ascended to, when he's figured that level out, he's become dominant. Um, he, he came out of high school, decent, went to UAB for a bit, was good there, went to Alabama, turned into a star, turned all sorts of heads around the place, went to the Corn Ferry Tour, figured that out, had a win, got on the tour, and I had a win. And I'm going to say this, and you know me, I'm, I'm pretty loath when it comes to kind of coronations and stuff, but this boy has the game to really be special. I mean, Alabama's got a star in Justin Thomas, I watch Lee Hodges play. I'd say the, 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 the physicality is comparable. And when he grows in stature mentally to build on what Kyle's saying, I feel like this boy's a stare. And now that he believes he can win, um, I have no doubt that he will win in the future. Again, my only concern is injury. But then as you look at what he does, he's got a gorgeous golf swing that doesn't put a whole lot of torque on his body. He creates ample speed for not working very hard where a lot of guys create all these tilts and, and bends and stuff like that. So they put a lot of uh, pressure on their body. Lee smashes it with his graceful pass. And he proved today he can play with a lead. He played with a lead for four days, right? On the PGA Tour. That is not to be scoffed at. That, I hope the writers, Kyle, Patrick and company, that you make a, a big deal about that because that is not easy. And, and he proved not just to himself, which is the most important thing, but he proved to the golfing public that Lee Hodges is for real. And, and I'm a believer. Uh, what's, mm -hmm. what's your, what's your career comp for him, Mark? Oh goodness. I, I've, you know what? I, I feel like he can put together a career where he, you know, he gets more, certainly more than five wins and he's going to threaten in big events. No chance. <laughs> I'd like to pay off the Justin Thomas bet, and then we can take another one on this. Long way to go. I'll take Gordon. I'll take Gordon Sargent, and you can have Lee Hodges. Bet right away for another this, case of one. The, wait, this the first off. This is like a thirty-year bet. <laughs> yeah, are, are, are we going to be around? <laughs> maybe, maybe longer. I'll I'll have that bet with you, Kyle. When's the Sargent is going to be on the tour? Right? How about we go next year? Sergeant versus Hodges. Whoa, next year. Next year. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Isn't Sergeant still at Vandy? 
uh, what is he now? Sophomore, junior, or something? Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's going to be out next year, right? Okay. Uh, he's going to get uh, all the points, I think. With the uh, you need like yeah. twenty points for the accelerated. But you can uh, you can use them. It. You can use them whenever you can. They okay. they they are eternal. I'll have that bet with you. I'll wait for you on that bet. Yeah. Sp- speaking of inflation, once this bet cashes, it's going to be like a winery, a whole yeah. vineyard. Man, I've just, <laughs> Patrick, I've just come back from France, man, and I looked at some wineless over there. My God. <laughs> Kyle, you better start saving, cousin. <laughs> we're going to, the JT bet is not going to hit uh, at this point. We got, we got, we got some time it's- to turn it around. You should have bought bought it now and then let it age for 15 years. And then if you have to pay it off, you could you could sell it because now you've got this this, you know, I'll sell this wine now and then just send them a bottle or whatever. So so I'm going to have to cancel out my JT bet with my Gordon Sargent over Lee Hodges. What, what is it? What is it? Wins money? What are we talking? Oh, you, can, you can figure that out because apparently we have time now, but I will have that bet when you're ready for it. Rick, you come up with the you, you should come up with like the the parameters here. All right. Gordon Sargent. I'll figure this out. Gordon Sargent versus Lee Hodges. I'll I'll have to circle back on that one. Um any other so Hodges goes from 74th to 33rd in the FedEx Cup standings. He is now just ahead of Russell Henley, Matt Fitzpatrick, Sung JM, just behind. Uh, Sahith, Justin Rose, Jordan Speed. Any other Lee Hodges takes before we move on? I mean, you don't have cost- to have Patrick. <laughs> I, I, I'm still kind of uh, catching my breath from this this back and forth. First, what, you know, which- Mark, Mark kind of comes at the writers in the room here. I like and then he, and then he really goes at Kyle. <laughs> Which side do you want, Patrick? Um, I want nothing to do with a Gordon Sargent Lee Hodges bet. That just <laughs> that is that's Most that's not for me. Gordon I'll Sargent's let, a, let you he's guys, a star. He's a star. Let, I will let you guys take that one, and I will happily watch from afar. Okay. I will. Say you want to th- I didn't. I, I didn't get to see. Lee Hodges play in person this weekend, but I was looking back at him and he hit, you know, there's a difference to me between good shots and the correct shots. And he hit the correct shot coming down the stretch on every hole. And he came through with shots when he needed to. And granted playing with a big lead can become dicey mentally and you can almost get a little too defensive. And there were times when he, he, he moved his target lines. You could see him maybe on approach shots and stuff just a little bit, but he still made convicted swings. And, and, and he put together a masterclass coming in there. It was super impressive to watch and well, well earned because last year at this very place, I had Tony Finau who was making a run, but everyone was playing for second until Scott Piercy made one mental and one physical mistake and the whole thing was done and dusted there after the 14th. So it, it was it was impressive from Lee Hodges, and he's got a whole lot he can take forward. This is one of those things where you really put it in the confidence satchel, and you take it forward because he's got the game. I cannot think of anything but Scott Piercy taking his shoe on and off every, every single shot yeah. last year. <laughs> Hate oh, to see it. God. All right, we are going to continue this conversation. We've got to recap our best bets. Not good. And we have to update the one and done. Oh. We have to update that. We will. On the other side, we're going to take a quick break. It's time. The best Transformers yet. There you go. Is now streaming on Paramount Plus. This is going to be fun, man. Manifestation. Transformers Rise of the Beasts Rated PG-13 Now streaming on Paramount Plus And we're back I suppose we should chat about this JT Poston debacle On the 72nd hole Speaking of losing money Which is what we did in our bets this week JT Poston had quite an expensive 18th Now let's before we get to the end result, Patrick, he was 
uh, on that very close to the water on the right hand side ball well below his feet. He had a three shot lead over the guys in third and he was what three back at the time. Correct. Three back. So he's in this awkward, like, well, I probably can't catch Lee Hodges, but I also probably, right. I probably can't come back to those guys behind me. I'm going to go for it, which in the moment I thought was the right move. I, I, I do too. I still think it's the right move, but you got to remember kind of who the player is, right? JT Poston. He's, I think he's inside the top 50. At least he was like, he's in good standing in the FedEx cup. Yeah. He's won on the PGA tour last year. Is that decision made by someone in a different scenario? I'm not sure, but. I think you got to go for a win there. Lee Hodges still had a wet shot. I know he stuffed it, but you're not totally sure what a shot he puts on the green to 30 feet will do to Lee Hodges and kind of how he's feeling over that shot. So you got to go for it. The mistake really was after that. I mean, he hits the right shot with the layup and then to not what he needed four shots from a hundred yards. That That's really the, the one that, uh, I think he'll be kicking himself for, but I, I, I would do that 10 times out of 10 if I was JT Poston. Mark, the vibe I was getting from you was that you did not like that he went for it. Is that is it? Was that a correct assessment of your facial expressions? <laughs> I have mixed emotions on this, right? Because I got done with my assignment and we were on the side of the fairway in my cart going back to the, the compound. And, and I saw where he was. And I'll just, I'll backtrack to Saturday afternoon when I had him and Fino in a group and he had a beautiful, JT didn't miss a shot Saturday. And he had a beautiful drive down there and he was in between five wood and hybrid. And there was a right sort of hole location and he hit five wood through the back of the green. And Aaron Fleener came past me and he goes, if it's tomorrow afternoon and he's got a chance to win, it's hybrid all day long. It would be the perfect club for that. So he was basically doing what Aaron said the afternoon before. But on a shot like that, you got to bear in mind when the ball is that far below your feet, for these guys, right, their body is going to slow down and the face is likely to shut down. And if they catch it, they're going to hit something long and left. And with that club, if he does, to that whole location, he wouldn't have had very much whatsoever. Okay, You'd rather miss off to the right-hand side. But the ball was, oh, a good foot below his feet. And for someone who's tall like JT, I mean, he's six foot two-ish, to stay that bent over to really catch one, that is hard work when the adrenaline was surging. And I was looking at this thinking, all right, he's three back. So he's effectively got a hole if Lee Hodges makes five. And look, Lee Hodges hasn't looked weak with a wedge the entire, the entire day. So you've got to roll the dice perhaps. But that was the kind of situation. Then I thought about it more. And remember, this guy's under the gun because you've got to make the call quickly. If you hit it in the water along that line, your relief is back kind of where you are. And then if you have another go and then you tweak it to the wrong place, oh, it could have gotten messy in a hurry. So I, I was like, just hit the thing in the fairway. Wedge it up there close. If you make four, it's good for your confidence. If you don't, you finish second outright. Let Hodges have the win. But I see what Patrick is saying. You've got to try and hold out. But Lee Hodges wasn't going to make six. He certainly wasn't going to make seven. So so, so I, I questioned the, the decision um, to a certain extent. But then I also understood why I tried to go for it. But a hybrid of a lie like that is just that thing, if he catches it, is coming out like a jet. And he's not going to make three anyway. What's more likely, KP, that Lee Hodges makes a seven or JT Poston makes a five from 98 yards away? What would it? When you say 98 yards away, what, what are you referencing? So there? That's where after he lay, took his drop and laid up, he had to get down in four from there. And he didn't. You so need he had to, to finish. Down four after the drop, right? Well, what, what was it, Patrick? Or he had to go. So his fourth shot was 298 yards. So his fifth shot, sixth shot, seven. Eight, no, yeah. So I, I'm saying, I'm saying the, there is not a lot of risk in JT Poston going for it because even if you have to lay up, it is so easy from where he has to lay up to, and he did successfully, to not to still not make an eight. Yeah. Yes. I mean, he just totally coughed it up after that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. I'm fine with going for it, but you can't. I mean, the, 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 the way that he made eight was like, that's, you can't do that. You got to finish. I mean, he, he, how much did it cost him? What, 260? Yeah. The difference between solo second, which was 850,000, and a three way tie for second is 590. So 260 G's. But, but you're dealing with an emotional situation there too, because once he's hit that second shot in the water, the air comes out of the balloon and all, all the adrenaline just leaves you. And now it's like, oh, heck. And it, it, it's so easy. I've seen so many golfers in my time out on golf courses. When something like that happens, the whole thing just comes apart at the seams. So now, now making eight from where he was, that's unforgivable, but I could have understood him making double real easy. I mean, it, it was just a hard situation that he was in. He, he, go ahead, Patrick. No, I mean, he just pretty much made a bogey on like a 90 yard par three. Right. Yeah. He almost, he almost got his ball to stay on the, uh, on the sign, KP, which would have been the, totally it would have, normal. It would have been the, the cover of normal sport three. <laughs> because, okay, so if your ball lands on that, um, it's in the hazard, right? You got to swim out there. But he could play it off of that if he could, could he not? Yes, you're allowed to. So, would they he have swam out there and given it a look? Hell yeah, that would have been. Had, uh, I had, mean, what had, if he's... had Mark underwater calling it? Or what if he just tied <laughs> for the lead and his ball sticks is is on the that thing? You have to swim out there and give it a look. What is it? What is it made? Like, is it made of? Would it hold plastic? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's like a. It's like one of those, um, like pool lounge chairs where if you st- or like a uh, like a mat that you put in the lake. We have these we have these mats that our kids jump on in the lake, and you can't as an adult like if you stand on it, it doesn't it won't. I mean, it'll like kind of hold you, but you like sink down. Yeah, you need more surface. He'd have to like lay a cr- wiggle across it so his surface area was more spread out. But then if he if he stood too close to the ball, the ball would just it. Well, <laughs> but the, but the the it might be big move. enough. Right. It might be big enough that it wouldn't sink. Like if he was in the middle, it wouldn't sink. If he was on the edge, I don't think you have any shot. Only one thing it'd be good for, and that would be the pip. He'd earn lots of points with that mm-hmm. thing. Given the uh, it would have been, it would have been <laughs> the greatest. Uh, I was, and, and as soon as I hit the rocks, I was like, "Please get on that big three M <laughs> thing. Please get on that." Because <laughs> yeah, because there would have been some scenario in which it would have been strategically correct to like go out there and see what's going on, which is yes. absolutely crazy. Abs- okay. Absolutely, it would have been kind- extra- extraordinary. We were kind of due for one too, because at the Honda it almost happened too. Yes, Kirk it almost went right on the seventy second. He almost hit the car. Yep. Or Brendan Todd, remember when Brendan Todd almost shanked one on seventeen at Sawgrass onto that island? Island. island. Could you imagine yeah. him going out there and trying to whack one out of the out of the flowers? Just canoe out there. How about this? JT Poston didn't have a bogey the last three days until that hole. 66 66 and then five under and then he made an eight that's that's tough i i i respect going for it but yeah i think producer josh said this earlier like you you can't make eight for, or you can't make four from whatever he was 95 yards or 100 yards uh, anything can happen in golf and it usually does is the, I think the saying, Go, Josh, grab this comment that says John Vandevelt would have swam out and then decided to drop, which <laughs> then he's sopping wet. Could you imagine? And he's got to, he's got to finish out just drifting. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. I like that a lot. <laughs> if you like, if you like losing money, Tell our bets, Josh. Let's see. <laughs> oh boy. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of red. Uh, we got one push. Thanks, Greg. And one win, KP. Tony Finau over Cam Young, which was sweat free because Cam Young did not make the weekend and Tony Finau was uh, basically in it throughout. He ended up finishing, I think, seventh. Heck yeah. Let's go. I'm just carrying this team right now. Yeah. Do we have the do we have the math on that? I'm not sure that's exactly true, but for this week you absolutely It's did. not even close to true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. 
Thank you, Josh. This for is wrong. Actually doing the auditing of this contest of this. Uh, <sighs> yeah. Tough scene. Well, that's, that's not good. One and done. Oh, there's our best bets. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Cam Davis to miss the cut. That was solid, Patrick. <laughs> he finished what? T- T5? Yeah, I, I took a, a long look in the mirror uh, when Cam Davis was making his run today. I'm going to turn into really positive version of myself for the playoffs. Playoff P, uh, make the cut parlays, I think, is going to be the way to go. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> a, a lot. Let's not let's not open that door. <laughs> um, all right. We've got one final thing to do, and it's arguably the most important thing to do because we are coming down the home stretch, and our one and done is very much up for grabs. We will update those standings after a quick word. When you're the FedEx Cup champion, your name's on this trophy forever. This is our season-long race. This is the sought-after trophy when we tee it up in the first event of the season that you think about. Three tournaments with the world's best golfers battling for the tour's toughest trophy to win, the FedEx Cup. The playoffs begin August 12th on CBS. Uh, that that commercial it's the guys at the end look so awkward in front of the camera and it has victor throwing up a golf ball and catching it and it look he looks like a robot like he has never ever been asked to do that before his entire life maybe it's maybe it's a maybe it's yeah, I was about uh, to say, AI? it might be a, deep a hologram it might be a, it might be a deep fake the one and done oh boy uh let's see kyle patrick the basement boys opted both to go with Ludwig Aberg. That was looking good for 36. Got off to a slow start, was hot on Friday. Patrick, you answer for this first. Uh, 16,614 <laughs> 16, for Ludwig. Sure. Incredible. Uh, just another week where we're making up ground on the leader there. We, we talked about Scott Piercy. Uh, earlier in this making, episode and I, ground on the leader yeah and, we'll get him in 2030 i'll get him before the jt bed hits technically uh, true <laughs> i'm thinking mark this is we're at the stage where mark has that blister it just popped and he's taken <laughs> off the shoe you know a lot of things are going his way he's making some nervy picks here i i, uh, I feel like i feel like mark is squeezing the club pretty tight right now oh, <laughs> and and honestly he might not say it but this sixteen thousand dollars that me and kyle put on the board this week uh it's definitely in the back of mark's mind if here, here you go patrick if patrick were to make up sixteen thousand dollars on mark every single week he needs 435 more weeks to get there. So that is about eight and a half years. Uh, yeah, 2030. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So spot and on. And then a, a little bit, a little bit. We're, we're actually looking at the – Patrick and I have opened a formal investigation into the bylaws of the league to see whether we can actually combine our number, our totals uh, for, for the for the end of the year. So you're we'll, playing, we'll, we'll, you're playing the first draft pick, off, pick aren't you? We'll report back. Yeah, I'm taking Sergeant. <laughs> the other good news is Mark still has that pes- pesky asterisk next to his name that we might have to deal with at some point. Hate that. Hate that. <laughs> mm. Yep. Uh, let's see. Greg opted for Lucas Glover. That got him zero dollars. Uh, Sia Najad went with Sep Straka. That got him zero dollars. I. Won the week with Emiliano Grillo, 196,950. I stay in my same position. How did I not gain any more ground here? Emiliano Grillo had a decent week. The fans went with Cam Young. Spoiler alert, that was worth zero. Kyle Matsuyama, Kyle Mysterious Matsuyama, got 46,744. And Mark, who has been gripping the 
club a little <laughs> tight. You know, he's been sleeping on a lead for a long time. This is why he wants you, the writers, to make sure to include this because he knows how impactful it is to sleep on the lead week after week after week. And it's weighing on you, Mark, isn't it? Because the last six weeks, you've earned a total of $132,000. <laughs> Uh, that that one hundred and thirty two thousand dollars aside, I feel like Justin Thomas right now because I've missed three or four cuts, and and you know it's not just missing by one. I'm missing cuts by a long way. So yeah, it's been a bit embarrassing. Uh, I must admit because the, the the making cuts is the most important thing to me, just to kind of get in the money because you never know what happens over the weekend. Um, Sanjay was a panic pick. I, I will be honest because I've been. <laughs> I, I was between t uh, Tony Finau and Sanjay this week, and I called wrong, apparently. Um, wrong. Tony played, yeah, wrong. So, so Tony played pretty well. Um, I'm in a pickle for next week, I will be honest with you, because I've I've had Tom Kim holstered the entire time for oh, this event, yeah. and he'd been mm -hmm. playing well, and now he's out with a foot injury. So uh, I'm, I'm keen to see what happens next week, but I'm feeling pretty good for the playoffs because I've got – Four studs, uh, three studs lined up, and I'm just kind of, well, you know, I'll play Rory in the last one, but the other two boys, I'm, I'm vacillating between who goes who in Memphis and who goes in, uh, in Chicago. So JT is not one of them. Mark is at sixteen million six hundred thousand. I will tell you, there is still fifteen point seven million dollars available. One point three six next week. Next then 3.6 million in Memphis, 3.6 million in Chicago, and a jarring, a jarring 7.2 million dollars at East Lake. This thing's never been more wide open. Let's go, Rory. <laughs> I gotta I, I have to I have to convince Mark to pick Rory before East Lake because that's my only I, I think are are he and I the only ones that have Rory left? I will find out for you. I think Greg might. I I'm going to have to go full on Billy Horschel on your ass, Mark, and, and just run through the playoffs. <laughs> the available Rory selections go to Kyle, Mark, Greg, and Mr. Mysterious has not used them. Wow. Ooh. Okay. This is, Mark, this is problematic. Mark, what are you going to do if you're uh, number two on this list and Kyle M still has uh, Rory? Well, look. Well, if Kyle M wins, look, I can I can handle that because he, he <laughs> paid money to be in this thing. But losing to you clowns, that would be I, I would stay. I wouldn't sleep for weeks on end. That would be uh, terrible. No one has Scotty Scheffler available. Sia okay. has John Rahm available. Okay. Wait a minute. No, he's used him, hasn't he? Used Scotty twice. One, two, three, four. Who? Oh. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I thought I saw an infraction. Uh, Sia has not used John Rom. I believe what you're remembering is he did not get a pick in. He tried to use John Rom after the deadline, did not get that pick in. Yeah, that's right. So he still has him available. Who else would be a good one? Uh, Scotty, Rom, Rory. Hovland, Marikawa. Oh, Hovland, probably. Okay, the oh, there's only one of us who have hot. Oh, God, it's Mark. Yeah, uh, baby. <laughs> oh, he's he's rattling off the people that he has available. Morikawa is another one. Yeah, but li like I've and said, Mark has too many people left. And we're going to U.S. Open style course now that I didn't use Fina this week, just in case. You know, I've got a little, I've got a safety parachute. I think I have Fitzpatrick left, which is nice. I have Wyndham Clark. Damn, you do, Kyle, have Fitzpatrick left. You also, uh, for Charles Schwab, it's just listed in here as X. Yeah, that's not Xander, but rather I just didn't pick. Oh, I thought it was the the website formerly known as Twitter. Well, uh, not that either. <laughs> I might have Burns left too. Sammy B. Is he we good? Should really compile. Yeah. So Burns is available for Kyle, myself, and Kyle M. I'm in a Kyle sandwich there. Fleet was a big Sep. Sep, the big, the big Sep Straka might be a good, good playoff pick. So basically, hold on, not about Sep. I'm thinking about Kyle Mysterious. 
So yeah. basically, Kyle, I'm going to use Rory at the Tour Championship. So you're going to have to burn him before then. Oh, he but will. you might. He's but good. you might have you might have some problems if if mm -hmm. Kyle M surpasses you at the BMW. Yeah, or also, before, yes, yes. Because then, it's oh, over. then he, can he can stymie trouble. you. Then he's gonna then he's gonna send you a message and say you better use him beforehand. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Big couple well, weeks coming up, Mark. Big yeah, couple weeks. Exciting. I'm nervous. You know, I just, it, I, this, I'm like JT. I've got to get off the snide over and put some good golf together. This would not be this would not be the time to be scuffling, Mark. If I were you, you know, heading into all this big money, it, it, it's it, you, you want to be trending upwards at this time of year. <laughs> yeah, at so least catching sixteen thousand. You guys, you guys have been singing off the same song sheet for the entire season. <laughs> Got hey, the people love the hits. You play. The hey, hits. nobody, nobody else has an asterisk. That's all I'm saying. It's true. Uh, listen to it. Yeah, we're still talking about that. Uh, you know, I'm we actually are. ready to investigate the, you know, Kyle M doesn't even have to come on here and defend his picks every week that the mental free freedom that that allows. I think we should put an asterisk next to his name too. I, I'm about to just eliminate everybody. Before <laughs> Why don't you just put an asterisk in front of everyone who's ahead of you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a, that might be a good idea. We're working yeah. on it. All right, gents, uh, Wyndham championship next week. Obviously, as we've discussed a million times, it is the final regular season event. I think it's 44 of 44, which is pretty crazy to think about. And then we'll be rocking and rolling right into these playoffs. Any final thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, two, th well, three things. One, I'm out on vacation next week. Pumped to enjoy. Go to Colorado. Two, I had to host on Thursday night. It's so difficult. And Rick, Thank you're you. very good at it. And okay. I'm grateful for that. And three, I just, if we have like two minutes here, I want Mark to walk me through how Lee Hodges is going to get to five career PGA tour victories, because that is like Harris English's career. Ricky. It's almost Ricky yep. Fowler's career. Like, do we think yeah. he's as good as those guys? Yep. I do. You think Lee Hodges is as good as Ricky Fowler? Uh, yeah, I do. Ricky Fowler is like one of the 15 best players of the last 20 years. I do. And I will die on this hill. I will. In All fact, right, copy, I... you, you guys can bring record this thing, Josh. I, I'm on the hill. <laughs> it's, 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 it's live on YouTube. The world. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm in the Lee Hodges camp. I'm a believer. And I've said this to you guys. I, I know this game. I've been around so many stars that didn't make it, I, this guy's got the chops. He does, mm. in my opinion. But, but what do you call it, Patrick? The eye test. He passes the eye test. He does have good action. It's kind of like, uh, I mean, Davis Riley-esque, it feels like his swing is, you know, that, that type of action. But, Mark, if, if, I'm, if I'm you, I, I, would, I would put my money where my mouth is, not only with this Scord and Sargent bet that's going to cash out in the year 3,000, but uh, why not a little sooner? You know, use them in the postseason. Use him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, use him. Roll him out. Roll him out in the first leg. <laughs> uh, well, look, the, the guys I've got for the postseason are all proven winners, you know, yeah. big time winners. So. It's going to be so annoying if Mark wins this. I hate it when Mark wins. Uh, uh, the, I just I can't get past this Lee Hodges take. I, 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 he's fine. He's a good player. He's a good player. I mean, you know, I, fi I, find that, I find that curious, Kyle, because you're the guy that normally has these these sorts of takes and then you just toss them up and once in a while they hit and then the rest of the time you're like, wah, wah, wah. I, I can yeah. take I can come out with a wild one once in a while, Connor. Mark, how do you feel about this? Eric just said that's up there with the, uh, the Scheffler take of mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I, I don't, I don't like, I don't know what the evidence is for Lee Hodges being like a, like a really great PJ tour player. He has got all of the game. He puts it great. He's got wonderful touch. The guy's his cerebral ap approach to the game is the most impressive thing to me. And like I say, when you're coming down the stretch and the sphincter is tightening, you know that tendon starts pulling on your brain? He hit the right shot every single time. He pulled the right club. Everything. He had not won on the PGA Tour, but he played like he had been there forever. Because oftentimes when you are chasing someone for your first win, even though you're nervous, you have that chaser's freedom. When you're playing out in front, then you sort of got your foot halfway on the break. So I just thought it was a masterclass this afternoon. And so he showed me that he had not just the way to swing it, because it's beautiful, 
he hits it flush every time. He, like, did you see those putts that he hauled out? They weren't limping into the hole. Those things were going in there with speed. He was playing like he meant it, and, and, and it was a very impressive performance. And and he, I put a big check mark in my Lee Hodges column this afternoon. Last word if you want it, KP. We're not going to be able to settle this tonight. Well, it, uh, yeah, like it's, statistically, he would just have to make an extraordinary leap from where he's been at for like the last three years. Kind of like the Justin Thomas leap that you bet on, right? He was going to win two times a year for the next 10 years. What was it? To become a a the player that Mark thinks he's going to become. So I just, it could happen. We've seen it from like, okay, Sam Burns is a good example, right? Like that can happen. It just usually doesn't. So I'll well, take Gordon Sargent. The good news is? We'll, we'll find never out. know. Eventually. No, eventually we will. I don't know if we'll ever talk about it. <laughs> uh, it we will eventually find out. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. No. Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Next week for the Wyndham Championship. Big thanks to producer Josh who records all of this. You can find Mark Immelman on Twitter at Mark underscore Immelman. Patrick McDonald available at Amateur Status. Kyle Porter, enjoy your vacation. Can be found at Kyle Porter CBS. You can find me at Rick Rungood. This has been the first cut. We'll catch you next time.